corner farms, guys. So I've got my first pass corn fungicide mix. So technically it's the second foliar pass, but first pass with fungicide. Fungicide that I'm putting on is Approach. Second pass will be with the plane with Micros, which Approach Prima. So that's at six ounces and Approach Prima is at 6.8. Our fungicide foliar fertilizer mix is at 216 ounces to the acre, and then potassium acetate, which is at a gallon to the acre, which I'm going to train that on beans for first pass and second pass fungicide, which will be both done with the sprayer, and uh, that's at a gallon to the acre uh, for the potassium, and uh, it's a 60 gallon of potassium acetate. It's pushing shoulder high out there in places. Looking really good, Pioneer 720. This foliar micronutrient mix that I put together that's going down right now with our approach fungus side is uh, Premium Grain Builder, Premium Foliar Plus, Maximize Manganese, Premium Magnesium, Synergy, Sugar Complex, and potassium acetate. And that's just something that uh, I worked together with uh, Dave and Brett on putting together. That's all uh, a combination of products. I asked if that's something we can put together, knowing that that's a little bit of extra of some, th some things that we need, uh, critically like uh, magnesium and uh, manganese especially, and uh, getting a little bit of touch extra zinc uh, that we don't actually get with the uh, uh, premium foliar plus you get some in there but i just wanted to get some extra with the uh, premium green builder plus uh, you get some more on from the premium green builder and synergy for the uh a little bit of extra secondary micros and also post photosynthetic booster which is pretty much what that's designed for and uh, 64 ounces of sugar complex which typically uh what most guys have been running including us or what we've been having most guys run Typically what we've been having most guys run is uh, 32 ounces and uh, I'm bumping, I'm going to end up bumping our rate up next year completely to 64 ounces for the most part unless uh, we're just spraying herbicide and it'll just be a straight 32 ounces but any foliar uh, micronutrient product we're going to be putting down it's going to have 64 ounces next year so that's kind of the mix and then potassium acetate to round that off at a gallon so uh, it's a pretty heavy mix of micros going down and uh, hopefully it does its job like I'm hoping it does well you can see how black it is to the south but when you look on the radar we are right on the edge of some rain right on the edge of it that is nuts I just hope it stays to the south and maybe this evening I can spray the rest. Well, two days later and it seems like this corn's grown at least a foot since I've been out here. My God. Spraying the last of the fungicide on the big irrigated field where I could not finish two days ago. And that is because it, yes, it did rain. It came down in buckets. <laughs> Yesterday was pretty much just spent uh, getting fertilizer moved around to uh, customers. 
and uh, getting stuff situated to fertigate today because we're going to fertigate tomatoes today and also fertigate some NCGA corn. We may also get the other fertigation pump out and fertigate the other 40 and uh, we got to run some micronutrients in the tank over on the NCGA field which I got ready last night so dad's going to do that. Dad's also going to deliver some foliar to a customer that ordered some yesterday. I got to order a bunch of foliar for a customer that put in an order yesterday, yet today. So a whole bunch of things going on and I can already tell you it's going to be a hectic day. But you know what? I'm going to get corn fungicide done and I'm hopefully going to get first pass soybean foliar done because that definitely needs to get done here. Yeah, I'm actually spraying right now. I'm doing, uh, finishing up that corn fungicide foliar and uh, gonna finish up some of the beans today. Okay, sounds good. Yep, thanks. Bye. So Dave's coming down with uh, Joel. Joel, I guess, is bringing uh, the fertilizer down for the tomatoes. So we got the guy from Surefire Ag coming out uh, sometime. It should be around 10 o'clock, he said. And, uh, all right, I need... Side, and I'm pretty sure it's this field. I think they're green beans. I don't know where he's at. Yeah, there he is. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Holy cow. He's coming right at me! <laughs> oh, this is going to be cool. Hit the drag line. <laughs> My God. Down to two acres, and that's in the field I was in this morning. And then I am completely done with first pass fungicide foliar. So the corn is done for the year with the sprayer. And the last pass on the all the corn will be fungicide with micronutrients and sugar with the plane. 
and then the corn is completely done besides irrigated corn with fertigation. Dad just got back from Laporte. He ran up there to get some AMS while well, liquid and dry because that's what our chemical rep is recommending for uh, running with Liberty. So he got some what's called Reduce, which is uh, I think a Helena product, and uh, Zipsol, I think, which is just you know your generic dry AMS. So. He's wanting us to run both liquid and dry with the Liberty, so I'm going to get Liberty, basically all of our Liberty spray tomorrow. Um, and basically after tomorrow, I'll be completely caught up because today I'm going to try and get most of the beans sprayed with foliar because this one field I'm going to have to spray herbicide first and then uh, spray foliar out and then switch over to Liberty. And it's just switching around, making sure there's no sprayer contamination or anything, and it's just nice to have the foliar uh, load as a buffer load between this chemical and that chemical, so there's no, no beans that get killed, put it that way. I do not want to see any brown beans. <laughs> and I've been monitoring our irrigation pump, and it's doing its job, at least so the uh, remote display access shows. And uh, as soon as I get turned around here on the end, I'll show you what I can see on my phone, what the pump shows, but it's really simple, really easy, and I really like it. Um, you can set it for gallons per acre, but that involves inputting a bunch of information that you need to know uh, from the pivot as far as length, time, this and that. Uh, whereas if you just use gallons per hour, it's a lot simpler. Um, basically, it's just automating the uh, agri inject pump, you know, which is basically what it, you know, you're just using a flow meter to automate that dial instead of having to dial, you know, like what's on the agri inject, you just input, you know, I want 150 point, well, I want 150 gallon per hour, which is what we're running right now. So, as you can see here, I mean, obviously I just, I haven't changed field name or named it anything. So, I mean, this is what that pump is called right now. I mean, obviously I'm gonna get that changed. Field number one, I mean, I haven't, like I said, I haven't changed nothing, but that's what we're running gallon per hour. Uh, that's the pump pressure right now. And then that's just showing the load on the pump. So from zero to 100% load. So right now we're at 85% because this is a 15 to 180 gallon per hour pump. So we're at 85% uh, total usage right now. And we inputted 840 gallon on the tank level. So that is just counting down based on usage, um, what we inputted there. Good afternoon, Great Market Equipment Parts. Hey, this is Keith Werner calling. Yes. Yeah, uh, I won't be able to make it down to get those today, but would you guys be able to set those outside the door and I can pick those up sometime sure. this evening? Sure. There's uh, that black cabinet out front. Yep. I'll set your stuff in that. All right. Thanks. Yep. You're welcome. Yep. Bye. Bye. Awesome. So I had some parts ordered for the sprayer, and uh, I'm just not going to be able to make it down there when uh, they close it. Four, I believe, maybe five, I don't know. They might close a little bit sooner. I think their hours are typically five, but I think since 4th of July is Sunday, I think. <laughs> Saturday, tomorrow is Sunday, one of the two. What's the second? So Sunday. You know, they might be closing at four and it's 2.36 right now. And it's like, you know, set them out for me because I'm not gonna have time to run down there before four and grandpa's out out and about dad's out and about getting fertilizer pumps around it's like we're stretched all over everywhere he just sent my parts out yeah i can do that awesome thanks Just about done fertigating tomatoes. Glad we got that figured out and we'll be correcting this 
next week, but at least we can say we're fertigating them and they look really good. And here regardless, what we've done isn't going to be any negative effect to them whatsoever, so glad to see it. Looks pretty cool. Thirty-inch high yield beans that we're uh, pushing hard again, like what uh, we did last year. And uh, these are irrigated. And uh, over at the river, we've got dry land thirties that we're pushing. And uh, I'm putting on an extra pint of boron. There's no boron in this base mix that I was originally planning on spraying, so I'm putting on an extra pint right now with premium boron. All right, let's double check see if this is all right get that thing off yes we need to go by that chart not the computer that's All right, phase converter is off. Phase converter converts single phase line to three phase line, so everything's on three phase. So that's why we've got the phase converter. We've got the phase converter on a couple of pivots, this pair of pivots and uh, a pivot down on my grandma's farm. So two phase converters, actually down on grandma's, uh, year or two after we put the phase converter in, they ended up updating the line to three phase. So technically we could almost do away with that phase converter. So if we ever put in a pivot, uh, eventually where there's just single phase and we need to put in three phase or uh, put in a phase converter, we can uh, pull that phase converter off that pivot, run three phase down to that pivot, and then move that phase converter over to the new pivot. So, so here's, uh, our fertigation pump. Uh, I'll show you guys more in detail tomorrow on starting it up and getting it programmed and everything, but that tank is empty. We will be fertigating more next week. That tank is for sulfur, and uh, we will be putting on sulfur either tomorrow or Sunday, one of the two. Dave basically said whenever we've got time to uh, get this pump back here to run sulfur, so uh, we'll run that on about four or five tons and uh, get sulfur put on. There's about 150 gallon on there, so roughly 32, 35 acres out here. So that'll go on at about roughly five gallon to the acre and uh, we'll have to convert five gallon to the acre. We'll have to convert that to gallons per hour, which the issue is uh, we can't just punch in gallon per acre on this thing. We can uh, if uh, we have all the information inputted from the pivot onto this, such as length, tower spans, blah, 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 time. Blah. It's, it's a whole list of stuff that seems a little ridiculous, in my opinion, on what you have to program just to do gallons per acre. But... We can do gallons per hour because it's, you just gotta do a little bit of math, but once you get gallons per hour down, it's pretty simple. And once we get the uh, rate styled in and everything, we can start writing down, okay, we need 150 gallons per hour for this setting, 160, 100, you know, whatever we need for that to convert for gallons per acre, you know, and this pivot setting of three tenths with this gallons per hour is going to put us on this much you know once we get that figured out we'll be good to go i'm going to take the sprayer and go down to our other 40 down the road here and uh make a pass across the end rows there clean the booms out with this foliar take it back to our house blow the booms out and uh get ready to spray some herbicide tomorrow hopefully and uh then start in on finishing up the last of the foliar acres. And then from here on out, it's fungicide and foliar on the beans. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.